check this out. This is my new computer. And I know many gaming PCs have colored lights like that, and it just looks so awesome. This thing is liquid cooled, uh, 4090 SSD, uh, what is it, um, DDR5 RAM. I mean, I had it built for me. Expensive? Yeah. Is it worth it? Absolutely. The thing is just blazingly fast, and that's what I wanted. Um, I'm going to leave a link down below to that company. Everyone, uh, everyone there, every time I had a question or wanted to check on something or when I was going through pieces and parts that I wanted, Everybody there has been so spot on. So thank you. There's a link down below. I think it's CLX, but it was built for me. Anyway, gray card, gray card, Johnny Pink. I think, I think I recorded an intro to this. If not, well, Johnny Pink, I'm going to show you my workflow, but I was out and I think I did. Johnny Pink, this is a video of my workflow and how I use Lightroom, how I process my photos, because I've been asked, how do you get these photos so sharp? It's all coming off of any of my cameras. It's just experience and doing it over and over and over. Anything you do, even if you go up and you flick someone in the ear like this, eventually you'll get really good at it. And I know that sounds silly, but it's just doing it and finding out what I like and what works for me. And I'm getting results that I like. So I share with you guys. Everyone has a different workflow, so watching people, how they work, is really, really cool to see the different styles and techniques. Again, like everything else, there's nothing that is an exact science. It's something that works for you, that makes your work super easy. So I'm going to show you guys how I edit my photos. I shoot everything in both RAW and JPEG, and I go through the JPEGs. And if I like it, I put it into another folder, and everything I don't like, I just kind of dump out of the way. And I just keep bulk deleting so I'm not holding on to junk. I only pick the best of the best and I stick them in Lightroom and I edit them up kind of quickly. And I've, I've just been doing it my way for a while. So for me, it's kind of second nature. But let's get into it over here and I'm going to show you how I do it. But what I do is I go through everything and I pull up my different photos. I, I double click on it. So I zoom into it and if I like it, then I keep it. But around the eyes here, right here, it seems to be a little bit soft. So this would be one that I dump. I'm going to go back. And I'm just going to start deleting things. I'm going to randomly go through and pick photos. And if there's one that's kind of sharp, I'm going to look at everything around it and maybe pick two of the ones that are sharpest. I will put those into a separate folder. Dump all the JPEGs unless it's something that I want to show the JPEG in comparison to the raw file. And from that... That's what I edit. Well, one other thing I wanted to mention is if you think that everything I shoot is spot on perfect, it's not. Nobody's is. So a lot of them look just like this. So what I've got once I open it up, you can see that this, this one right here, it has no focus. Uh, this one has no focus as well. And this one, I believe, was the Canon R7. I just mi miss focus sometimes. It happens. It you miss focus. Sometimes there's just no way around it. It is what it is. And this shot right here is not one that I would develop, but it's got too much motion blur. My shutter speed was way too slow. Shutter speed's too slow, so I have some motion blur around the eyes. The wings look really cool. Maybe I'll take that one out and I'll edit that one up too. So now we're going to hop into Lightroom. I was going through it and really just kind of randomly picking shots that I think are cool. And that's, and I do. I I. I should, as I said, I shoot in JPEG and RAW, and I go through the JPEGs, and if I like it, I dump it into a separate folder, then I go back and I delete everything else, because there's no point in keeping things that you don't like, just empty branches, things that are out of focus. It's not worth it. What's the point? So now, now we're going to Lightroom. <laughs> okay, so now that I've got everything into Lightroom, let's go ahead and create a collection. Uh, but I've selected all of them, create a collection. This is just for this video. For the video is what I'm going to call this. Now, we're going to hit develop and go in here. And I randomly pick just one. And for this one, I'm going to pick it. Look at that. The beautiful, oops, mid blink, right? So normally I have two screens going. For this, I'm just going to keep it right here. I know what this screen looks like. So going between the two, the differences in the color. Uh, first thing I always check is I've got my profile set. 
It comes up Canon, shows me what lens it is. The next thing I do is I want to get right over here next to the eye, but not on the eye because in this little section right here, I want to see just above the eye. So click on the masking and I hold the Alt button and I don't remember, I don't know what it is on, on Mac because I don't use Mac, I'm a PC guy. And I get up there until I've got nothing, none of the highlights left. Okay, so now it's all gone. Now, that's my mask. I'm just going to sharpen what's here. So I usually put the amount up pretty high. Nice and sharp and crisp. All the little detail comes out. Just a little bit more detail on that. Maybe not quite so much. And then I pull down the radius. This is the way I do it. You might do something that's a little different and it's all to taste. Okay. Noise reduction. I usually push up maybe to four, between four and ten. And this one, I'm just going to set it right there. Okay, but I, I don't like the framing of that. So I'm going to get it to a frame that I like. That's why I like having a larger sensor is I can crop into what I want. I don't want them quite center because I do like this section of tree that's right here. Let's see what auto does for this. Auto. Oh, gosh, no. Too bright. Uh, that's okay. I like my my darks nice and deep and rich. I like rich color on that. So we're going to give it a little bit more clarity. Okay, so it's getting close. But now we're going to add the masks. So we click on the mask button. We're going to select, select the subject. And if I was in focus with this, it's just I have green selected right now. I change my color all the time. You want a different color. Uh, for this one, let's pick, pick pink. Easy to see. Cool, we'll get out of there. So now it's not quite highlighted or large enough for me. So let's get in here nice and tight. We're going to click and we're going to select this mask one more time. So what am I going to do on this? I'm going to come right down and add some texture. I love the texture. Mid blink. Look at that. OK, and just a wee bit of sharpness, a little bit of clarity. I think I need some shadows to come out on that. Not quite vibrant enough for me, so I'm going to add a little bit more saturation. And a tiny little bit of noise. One thing I don't like about, about a background is sometimes you see the noise in there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back to the masks, create a new mask, but this time I'm going to select the background. Purple, beautiful. But let's make it nice and smooth. So I'm going to take the noise all the way up. And I'm going to take the sharpness all the way down. So now I've got that creamy background that uh, just really makes that little hummingbird, that beautiful little jewel pop, just so nice. Do I need a little bit more vibrance? I'm not afraid to play with the vibrance. If I didn't like something, or let's say that I want more red in there, I will go to my saturation and I will just saturate my red just a tiny little bit. We're going to make that plus seven. And then, of course, it might need a little bit more purple, too. And just a wee touch of green. And there we go. I like that. And so now I'm going to color mark it as a red, just so that I know when I get into other folders, I will know which ones I have by what color I was using or what mood I was into that day. Most of these have color and I've already deleted in these other files um, vid, uh, photos that I didn't use. So right here for this particular video, I know that it was red. That's what I just what edited up. I love mid blink. I picked several of those. Now I'm going to go to my development settings. I'm going to copy those, including the masks. And I want to find one where, OK, this was the one that I have too much motion blur in. Let's go to this one because I really like that, that pose as well. It's pretty similar to the other. And we're going to make this one pop even more. So first, development settings. I paste everything. Masking. Um, everything. It didn't pull the mask. Copy over. So let's copy it all one more time. Development setting. We're going to copy everything. Mask 1, 2, lens correction, everything. Copy. We're going to go over here. We're going to paste. Paste all the settings. It's going to just paste everything. There we go. Okay. This one, it looks like it has 
a little bit too much in the highlights for me. So we're going to pull those down a little bit more, bring out some of the brightness, a little bit too much white. There we go. But now the special sauce on this, if I go in and I continue to zoom into it, Okay, I can get more out of this, but what do you really focus on? When you're looking at a photo, wait, can you see my eyes? There you go. When you're looking at a photo, what do you really focus on? If you're taking a photo, eyeballs. Eyeballs are what it's all about. So we're gonna bring the eyeballs out on this one by, by coming up over here. I'm gonna create another new mask. Go into my masks, create a new one, click on the brush. And I know it's purple, so I'm just gonna color in that eyeball. And the other thing that really makes them jump out is the beak. Doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, if it's not, I think it might add a little more character and texture, but I say that only because um, I guess I'm not that good at coloring inside the lines. Okay, now here's what we do. Here's what I do. You, again, might have a different way of doing it. I hit the clarity and I pull up the noise. That really makes the eyeballs the eyeball and the beak shine so that when I zoom in or out. Man, I like that. And if I want more, I will do it again in certain places. Sometimes I'll go back in and just kind of brush over some of the feathers. Um, maybe something like this with a brush. Come down over here and brush in some of these. There we go. Maybe do something like that and add some texture to it. I like the texture tool. It just adds, a it doesn't look as harsh to my eyes as the sharpness does. Sharpness is okay. I use a little bit of that too, but I like texture. I like it a lot. And there's some in cases where I've just pushed it all the way up. It's so subtle that I think it looks really, really nice. Again, this is just my technique. Okay, so I've edited that one. I'm going to add a color, color label so that I know what I've done. But I've already copied the one, so I'm going to copy and paste it to all of them. You can't really copy and paste the eyeball setting because the eyeballs are always in different places, but it's going to choose the background and it's going to clean that up for you pretty quickly. And also your subject will be cleaned up really quickly and it's pretty nice. So now that I've got them all selected over here, development setting, paste, Let the computer do its thing. Now, this is the one that I was talking about earlier that has motion blur in it. It has a little bit too much, but I think it's still kind of a cool photo. So I'm going to export these and uh, let's just collect them all. We're going to export it. Export to a file. I'm going to choose this file. Going here to Hummingbirds. It's not going to show all of this section. I mean birds. Johnny Pink, you didn't think I'd be sitting here without a drink in my hand, did you? Oh, no, no, no. So now, I, I didn't spend as much time on this as I would normally, but I do things in batches like that. And then I go through and I tweak individual photos, the ones I'm gonna share. I throw away a lot of photos, but that's because I just simply enjoy being out there with the camera, getting to hang out with James, other people that I meet out there. Just pulling the shutter sometimes, walking with the camera makes me happy. And you get these treasures, these special little things. I, I love hummingbirds and come summertime, it will be dragonflies all over again. 
there's cars outside really loud racing cars especially over the holidays um and come midsummer time we'll have ospreys here again it's just so much fun to get out there and shoot again there's a link to the company that built this computer for me it's a gaming company exceptional folks really knowledgeable they even answered my phone call on thanksgiving day here in the united states and i think they're in kansas the box that they shipped this on is a massive crate there would have been no porch pirates for that thing it had to roll it in anyway it's just it's phenomenal uh lenses if you guys are interested in in renting a camera renting a lens my first suggestion to you is go down to your local camera so shop and see if they rent something if they don't first i would say please support a local business they need the support but if they don't there's a, a company that i use for rentals it's an affiliate link down there so you i get something for it but you get to try out different cameras and lenses that might otherwise be out of your budget or you don't want to spend money on until you've tried it and like everything man it just takes practice go out there have fun enjoy the art of photography present your artwork in a in a in a format that you want somebody might be perfectly happy with that with that shot with the motion blur and i like it and i'm going to use it anyway because i think it's pretty cool johnny pink you guys have a fantastic day i'll see you out there and if you see me please come up and say hi let's uh or get a hold of me there's an email down below there too and we can go shoot i'll see you guys you have a fantastic day mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. it's all warm and fuzzy nikon coming up next